segment I am interested to talk about population ecology and the carrying capacity. Let us take for example the microscopic yeast cells. They are unicellular fungus that reproduces by budding. That means that they make a small copy of themselves and break apart and a free living clone. They reproduce very quickly and that's good for us because when added to dough they will eat the sugars they produce and produce lots of carbon dioxide that helps the dough to rise. They are also useful in population studies or population ecology because they can be controlled in a laboratory. We can control their environment or their ecosystem and we can see how their numbers grow or shrink over time. If you were to introduce yeast cells in a glass container with food, they begin to first multiply slowly, then multiply fast and then level off at some point. And at the end all the yeast cells start to die out. Eventually they go extinct. When we have a population growth like this, we usually consider that there is going to be a limiting factor. Limiting factor is any condition that prevents the population from growing too large. Those can be living, that means biotic factors, and non-living, that means abiotic factors. When there is a limiting factor in place, there is a limit to the population, and that limit is called the carrying capacity. Carrying capacity imposes the limit on the population growth due to the environmental conditions. So what do you think that was limiting the population of yeast? First, we did give them food, but no more food was added. So food could have been a limiting factor. They may have running out of food and they were starving. Another limiting factor could have been that they were producing waste. They do produce alcohol, which is a poison for them. They might have poisoned their environment and killed them off. Now, what about some biotic limiting factors? There could have been a predator that was running around inside of the glass container and eating them up and causing their population to be limited. Or could have been a disease that was limiting the population. Those both are the biotic limiting factors. The next situation I want to talk about the predator-prey relationship. For example, let us take a fox and a rabbit. When the rabbits are plenty, then the fox population tends to rise. When the predation population, predator population increases, prey population decreases. And this cycle happens over and over again. It's called the predator-prey cycle. The next situation I want to talk about is the competition. If you put the two species in the same glass container, one is Parmesium aurelia and the other is Parmesium caudatum, which are single cell eukaryotes, and population might change like this. One species might rise and reach to the carrying capacity while the other species goes locally extinct. You will never see the predator prey population who do this. If the prey population goes extinct, then the predator population also will go extinct because there is no food for the predator. And one last situation I want to talk about is the one that is more familiar with you. I'm talking about our human population. For thousands of years, our human population was relatively stable and just within the last few hundred years that our population has risen up to 7 billion. Our biosphere is like a glass container. It's pretty much a closed system. We have finite water, food and air. By adding more humans, we are putting pressure on all the ecosystems. Can we at least learn some hard lessons from the yeast cells?